Okay, so now that we've uh, done with wealth and trade for now, let's move on to civilian economy tab. So first up, you have your uh, colony stability. So this is used for civilian transportation of colonists. So you can set a colony to be a destination, which means the civilians will bring colonists to the that particular colony. You can set it to be a source of colonists, so they will collect civilians from this colony. Or they can, you can set it as a stable um, colony, so they will completely ignore it for the purposes of colonist transportation. Military restricted colony will cause um, all civilian freighters and colony ships to completely ignore this colony. Uh, so you can see here, any civilian freighter scheduled to visit the colony will abandon the cargo and seek new trade runs and colony ships will be diverted. So civilians will completely ignore any colony flagged as military restricted. So this will not matter. They will completely ignore it. Um, this also does not affect freight. Um, so freighters will ignore this. Only colony ships will actually pay attention to this. This will cause all civilian shipping to completely ignore it. So you need you need a colony on a planet, for example, a hostile planet, to conduct ground invasions and stuff like that, or um, for setting up uh, listening posts and stuff like that. So for anything that you don't want civilians to start growing a population on, you want to flag as military restricted. That way they won't conduct trade, they won't send population. If you've seen my last Let's Play, um, for VB6, the tutorial guide, you'll probably remember the numerous times that civilians started shipping population to a zero colony cost world that just happened to be an alien home world. Oh, and of course they're offloading colonists fucking anyway. For fuck's sake. Oh, fucking hell, they're doing it again. Over because the civilians are a bunch of fucking morons. They're doing it fucking again. This tick box prevents that scenario. It also allows you to control civilian shipping in general. So you can see what's on the colony and you can set demand and supply of various buildings that you want the civilians to ship uh, to or from. So for example, if we wanted to move this maintenance facility to a different colony, we would set the maintenance facility, we would add a supply and then at the destination, we would go here and we would set maintenance facility and add one to demand. Now, obviously, that doesn't work here because it's the same colony, but this will let you set supply and demand for civilian uh, freight shipping for colonies. This is probably the easiest way to move things because there is nothing more annoying than trying to move 50,000 infrastructure to a new colony and having to figure out exactly how many trips of the eight different kinds of freighters that you have in your freight fleet is actually required to transport that many infrastructure. It's annoying. It's faster to just go, okay, I want to move 5,000. Set supply, set demand, job done. And then you can just forget about it. Um, now, it doesn't work if you have one of the ends restricted to military restricted, but... Um, for two colonies, like in the same system or connected by a gate network, um, this is the easiest way to move installations. Um, especially because some installations are bigger than the freighter they're on. So it's like, okay, so the installation is 250,000 tons. I have a freighter with 8,000 tons. How many trips do I need? Yeah. It, it just makes life a lot easier. It is important, however, to make sure that you do have balance... Uh, between your colonies so y if you I, I don't know if the AI is smarter probably is in C sharp but in VB6 for example if you had a supply that didn't have a demand um, all the freighters would just park at that one location and just sit there waiting for demand to appear so yeah make sure that you always have a balance um, and two different colonies if you have a supply of something but you don't have those objects on there don't set, make sure that you have enough to supply the supply order and make sure that you have a corresponding demand somewhere else uh, in the galaxy uh, on network 
that will be that that supply will be able to actually fulfill. If you don't have the correct mirror, don't make the supply or get rid of it and just wait until you're ready. So ideally, you want to make sure that uh, every supply order can be fulfilled and every supply order has a corresponding demand order. 